So I wanted to talk about um, how information geometry arises in the context of statistical in inference. Uh, so let me first begin by uh, saying a little bit about <clears throat> the most basic um, sort of statistical inference one might be doing, it's like, which is the question of estimation. All right, so let's say you have some sort of uh, manifold of statistical models. Um, so you have basically a bunch of probability distributions, it's like which depend, it's like on the random variable space, uh, and then there's a parametric family, okay? And so, um, <clears throat> so the basic idea then is that the coordinates, it's like on this, uh, you know, it's like manifold or statistical models is uh, C, okay? So, so M is a sort of, is a statistical model. Right. <coughs> Specified by a parameter. <coughs> Let's see. All right. <coughs> and of course, we want to basically estimate uh, the C. So um, what, <coughs> what happens obviously is that um, you observe, it's like, um, you know, it's like from your, from your data. So you make n observations, for example. So when we make sort of n uh, independent sort of observations, D x1 to xn um, generated, <coughs> excuse me, generated, it's like from the given probability distribution. And from these n independent observations, it's like you want to estimate, it's like uh, the parametric value to see. So this is the question of estimation, okay? So okay, and you can construct an estimator, okay? <coughs> That's called it because C hat the sum function of x1 to xn, which is the data you've sampled, right, is a function of the data d. <coughs> so we can talk about the uh, error associated with the estimator, right? So the estimation error, as you might expect, is the difference between the estimator and like the actual value uh, which you're trying to estimate, which is C. Okay, where C is the true value. As you might expect. Then once you're given an estimator, it's like we can talk about this idea of <coughs> um, the bias, it's like in the estimator, okay? So the bias of the estimator is defined to be the following, okay? So you have a bias of the estimator. 
is the expectation with respect to the estimator, the expected value of the estimator minus um, the true value. <coughs> Where, as you might expect, it's like we're taking this expected value with respect to uh, this probability distribution. So the expected value is with respect <coughs> P, X, C, <clears throat> which makes sense, right? So, I mean, it's like the thing you're keeping in mind is that you're assuming that reality is described by this probability distribution <coughs> and for a specific value, you can see. And then with respect to that probability distribution, you, um, you know, it's like you draw data, observations, or samples, which generates this sequence of data points, and then you apply the estimator to then get this estimate, right? So, so what you're saying is that for a particular reality, if you will, right, you want to sort of look at what happens. It's like, you know, when you look at, <coughs> you know, what happens when, when you draw these samples, it's like from that given probability distribution, and you want that in expectation with respect to the fact that you could have different data that, you know, it's like that this estimator, the expected value of this estimator is, is uh, <coughs> differs, it's like from the true value by something which is small and ideally zero, right? So, um, so this is the bias and then we say that, uh, you know, an estimator is unbiased when the bias is zero as you might expect. Estimator is unbiased when the bias is zero. <coughs> All right. So, you know what? What is, of course, interesting is, um, and this is something which happens um, when you're doing numerics, for example, or you know, it's like, oh, when you do statistics, right? So when you do numerics, it's like you might ask, well, what happens if you take more time steps? So when you do statistical inference, you might ask, what happens if I have more data? Okay, and in particular, I'm interested in asking, well, <coughs> as I increase the number of data points which I draw from the distribution, how fast it's like does the error in the estimator uh, decrease, right? Um, or for example, how fast it's like does the, the bias it's like decrease. Okay. So the asymptotic uh, theory. studies the behavior of an estimator when n is large. And uh, so when the bias satisfies <coughs> the following, that if you take the limit as the number of data points goes to infinity, and the bias of this estimator is zero, then uh, we say that it is asymptotically unbiased, right? So, uh, so right. So, in addition to <coughs> this question of expectation, right, of that thing, you would actually like that uh, there's a some pointwise sense. It's like in which the estimator actually converges, 
when you have enough data. Okay, so, you know, it's like, you know, so being unbiased and being asymptotically unbiased is good, but that's just a question of expectation, right? So you want to sort of be able to say that if you compute a single realization as you add more and more data, right, that estimator, that specific estimator you compute for a particular realization with, you know, more and more points, that has an error which goes to zero, right? So it is expected, so it is desirable, if you will, for a good estimator to converge to the true parameter. <coughs> as n goes to infinity, right? And so we just say that the limit as n tends to infinity of cos c hat, right, is equal to cos c, right? And again, as I said, it's like, it's important to distinguish this from this notion of unbiased or asymptotically unbiased, because here it's like there is an expectation. <coughs> so that means you're looking at sort of all possible sequences of length n of data, it's like drawn independently, it's like from that distribution, right? This is a stronger statement because it says that each individual sequence as n goes to infinity, right, converges. Well, it's a, it's a different notion. <coughs> right. Anyway. So when this is true, <coughs> then we say that the uh, estimator is consistent. Okay, so it's like your consistency asymptotically unbiased and unbiased. <clears throat> so again, if you want to sort of think about this in the context of example numerical methods for ODEs, right? I mean, it's like, you know, the notion of consistency there is as you let the time step become smaller and smaller, it's like the answer converges pointwise, right, to the true solution, okay? And <clears throat> so this is sort of analogous, it's like to that notion of consistency, okay? All right, so you might ask, well, how do I go about measuring? It's like the error. <coughs> so, uh, so one can measure um, the accuracy an estimator by the error covariance matrix. <coughs> right, which makes sense, right? Because, you know, it's like when, you know, when we talk about, <coughs> yeah, when we talked about the <coughs> Excuse me, when you talk about this idea of <coughs> bias, for example, it's more or less saying that in some appropriate sense, the mean of the error is zero, right? In some weighted, it's like probabilistic sense. So um, if you want to know that the error is actually really small, <coughs> in addition to knowing the mean, you want to know the, the variance as well. And so that's exactly what's gonna happen here. We're gonna use this like this error covariance matrix to measure the extent to which <coughs> the error is not just small and mean, but the distribution is somehow <coughs> concentrated about zero, right, in some appropriate sense, okay? So, all right, so this matrix is V uh, with components <coughs> I and J, and V I J is the expectation of uh, the I component, the 
estimate of the i-th component minus the true value of the i-th component times the estimate of the j-th component minus the true value of the j-th component. All right. So, all right, so this decreases in general. proportion to one over n, where n is again the number of samples. Okay, and so the estimator or the estimate becomes <coughs> sufficiently accurate. n uh, becomes large, right? Okay. So, um, so you can you can estimate it's like the rate of convergence, if you will, of this estimator. Um, and one way to do this is this uh, sort of kramer rao theorem. So, the Kramer. here gives a bound on the accuracy. <coughs> so let me state the theorem. Right, so if you have an asymptotically unbiased estimator, the C hat, right, and the following holds, right, that this <coughs> error covariance matrix is greater than or equal to 1 over n g inverse. And all right, so, so a, a word is in order, right? So when we talk about inequalities which involve matrices, so v and g, uh, and I should also say that g is the uh, <coughs> Fisher information metric, all right? So when v and g, it's like our matrices and you have an inequality, what the first question you should ask yourself is what do you mean by that? Right? And what you really mean by that is that when you take everything to the left and you say some matrix is greater than or equal to zero, you're saying that, you know, that matrix is uh, positive semi-definite. Okay? So this is saying that V minus 1 over N G inverse is positive semi-definite. Okay? All right. So again, if you haven't seen a matrix inequality before, this is what you're really saying. <clears throat> and the second thing has to do, again, with this uh, error covariance, but I'm going to write it in component form, right? So that's saying that I can say Vij, right, which is, again, this expectation is greater than or equal to 1 over n g i j. <coughs> All right, so that's a statement about the matrices as a whole. That's a statement about the entries, right, individually. So this is a scalar inequality, so that just gets interpreted in the usual way. So again, where g is Gij, which is the Fisher information matrix. <coughs> and as you might expect, G inverse is its inverse. And 
as I said, the matrix inequality is saying that this difference <coughs> is positive semi-definite. Okay, all right. Okay. So another thing which you might have heard the term referred to is this idea of maximum likelihood estimators, right? So the maximum likelihood estimator is the maximizer of the likelihood, which seems tautological, right? Okay, so the C H M L E, right, is the arg minimizer, oh, I'm sorry, arg maximizer over the C <coughs> of the product of P X I to C. I equals to one to N. Right? <coughs> so you've taken N samples, it's like from this distribution. Alright. Uh, so you're looking at so the probability of getting that specific sequence because they're independent uh, you know, identical draws, it's like from the same distribution. It's just the probability of getting xi, it's like at C, it's like, and then multiplying all of it for x, for i equals 1 to n, right? So that's just the probability of getting the sequence x1 to xn. <coughs> and we're just going to maximize that um, over all possible um, parameter values. Okay, and this is what we call the maximum likelihood estimator very natural thing to do. So you know that, so the maximum likelihood estimator is uh, known to be asymptotically uh, unbiased. And you can say something about its error covariance. the following, that the error covariance of the maximum likelihood estimator is equal to 1 over n g inverse plus something which is big O of 1 over n squared. <coughs> so what that basically tells you is that it actually achieves the uh, kramer rao bound, so it achieves uh, asymptotically as n goes to infinity. And then we say that this is Fisher efficient. So, so we're not going to talk for now, it's like about this idea of Bayesian estimators, uh, Bayes' estimator, um, but we'll, we'll address this, it's like uh, later on, okay? So, all right, so anyway, so as a recap, it's like we talked a little bit about this idea of estimators, it's like of, um, more or less it's like which probability model, it's like it's a good estimate uh, of the, um, you know, based on the sample data. Um, and introduce this idea of what it means for an estimator to be unbiased. 
to be asymptotically biased uh, and to be consistent. And then we measured, it's like this notion of the error, if you will, the estimator, it's like through this uh, covariance, uh, error covariance matrix, right? And then we uh, mentioned this Kramer Rao theorem, which gives you um, sort of estimates. It's like about the, um, the <coughs> error covariance matrix. And then um, we remarked that the maximum likelihood estimator, which is sort of a very common choice, right, is asymptotically unbiased, it's like, and it, it has a co error covariance which actually satisfies the uh, kramer rao it's like inequality uh, as n goes to infinity, right? So it's uh, sort of, yeah, satisfies this bound asymptotically, and that is referred to as being Fisher efficient. Okay, so let me stop now.